Hello my lords, ladies and lady lords, and welcome back to Film de Siecle. And boy, do we have a question to pose for you today. Action Man was an action figure line in the UK produced by Hasbro from the 1980s to 2010. He was sort of his cross between Pierce Brosnan and James Bond and Robbie Williams, who would travel the world, constantly gaining new weapons, skills and attire in order to fight an evil scientist called Dr. X, who used to be bold, but then he had a mohawk, and sometimes he wore a Viking helmet, maybe to honour his Scandinavian ancestry, I don't know, uh, his goatee was constant though. My introduction to Action Man was at age five, when my dad bought me an old Action Man doll as a gift at a car boot sale. I distinctly remember not liking him and being terrified of his swivelling eyes. And the doll was quite creepy too. On to the topic of the video. Was Action Man the bad guy? You'd assume not, right? Well, watching the old adverts back, you're hard pressed to find any actual evidence of Dr. X even committing any wrongdoing in the first place. Here is footage of an Action Man advert where Dr. X is minding his own business, riding a motorbike, and then Action Man leaps from the air to assault Dr. X. He's driving a motorised vehicle! That bastard! And here, he's just chilling in the jungle, minding his own business. Then he gets an unprovoked boot to the face. We would occasionally, however, get an advert that began with the premise of Dr. X committing some kind of crime. But it would usually be something petty and negligible, such as destroying pottery. Or causing global warming? Action Man, the greatest hero of them all! And they have the audacity to claim that Action Man is the greatest hero of them all. What, greater than our key workers and healthcare professionals? Greater than Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin? All I'm saying is part of a reason why I was never that into this toy line as a child is because it's kind of hard to root for a guy who assaults other people for no reason whatsoever. Exhibit number two. Who does Action Man work for? Action Man is an ostensibly British... As an aside, Action Man had his origins as a licensed copy of G.I. Joe, an American line of action figures. Although I am given to understanding that America also has Action Man now. I don't know, it's kind of like 4Kids Yu-Gi-Oh, his international origins are an absolute mystery. Action Man is ostensibly British and has access to a plethora of weaponry and vehicles, often displaying martial arts skills to boot. But it's never actually established who he works for, if anybody. We never see him talking to or receiving orders from anybody else, so we can rule out him working for any nation's secret service or military branch. No, in fact, all of the evidence points to Action Man merely being independently wealthy enough to be able to afford military-grade weaponry and equipment in order for him to wage this campaign of abuse against Dr. X, who mainly appears to be acting in self-defense. Look at this, he's a literal doctor with actual qualifications in the field of chemistry. I mean, Dr. X could be developing a cure for cancer for all we know. But he's never going to, because this dickhead keeps breaking down walls to physically assault him. But the absolute lowest point has to come from 2002, when Hasbro launched the Action Man, the final combat campaign, which was a high-budget multimedia marketing campaign held in conjunction with Argos, Toys R Us and Asda, as well as the Daily Star and Financial Times newspapers. I'm not making this up. The final combat campaign launched with a literal cliffhanger ad, whereby Dr. X, as a result of an altercation with Action Man, found himself hanging from the edge of a cliff, at the end of which children were asked, should Action Man try to save Dr. X? At this stage, the aforementioned companies would roll out a series of vote flashes, utilising means at their disposal, such as the then popular Argos catalogue, rest in peace, to facilitate voting in these doll-based referenda, this was ultimately an extremely successful advertising campaign, by the way, reportedly engaging up to 17 million people. And as a frame of reference, in 2001, at the previous general election, almost 11 million people voted for the governing Labour Party. So that's quite an impressive feat to engage 17 million people. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. 
several months later and the result of the vote was declared in a follow-on advert. Action Man let Dr. X fall to his death. You heard right. The vote was in favour of Action Man, the good guy, dropping his defenceless foe to his death. Yikes. It is hilarious in hindsight that the toy company had to make it so that their heroic good guy committed murder on daytime TV. They seriously believed that 8-10 to year old boys who beat each other up in the playground for fun, pluck the wings off ants, and who, by the way, often destroy their own toys. Where are your rebel friends now? <laughs> they seriously thought that these little brats would pick the morally correct option and have Action Man save Dr. X. How adorable. I love the idea of these new Dr. X toys being produced and the assembly line coming to a halt when it's revealed that they've wasted all this money on making new toys for a character that is now canonically dead. My primary source of these statistics and detail behind the Final Combat campaign comes from Sam D'Amato, media planner for OMD, who wrote an article for Campaign Live in 2004 about how his campaign was largely successful in engaging with its target audience. Which, by the way, is a fascinating time capsule into what advertising companies were doing during that transitional time before the majority of these campaigns were run by social media. It's quite a fascinating read. He alleges that Action Man was in decline as a brand at the time, lacking talkability. I will give him this, regardless of the outcome, this was the talk of a playground for months. In conclusion, yes, Action Man is indeed the bad guy. But he's only as bad as society has made him. The pole was not an example of power corrupting, merely power revealing. Action Man is a Vorschach test, a perception of the darker side of youth. Our violent, yes, even our envious side. It is no coincidence, after all, that Action Man's primary victim of his violent actions is a scientist, a recognised doctor. Are the optics of a macho, brawny ideal of masculinity targeting an intellectual of higher social standing troubling? Am I overanalyzing? Am I reaching? Brother, reach me, reach me. That's for you to decide. Action Man! The evil Dr. X has bought a new home for him and his family of evil minions. Scupper his wicked plans with awesome arson Action Man. Action Man, the greatest hero of them all! Pour the petrol, light the match, and incapacitate the villain. Enjoy carbon monoxide, poisoning X. Action Man Awesome Arson.